Hey everybody, my name's Ed. This is uh, Old School Comic Book Reviews. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit different. Um, I'm actually reshooting this video because I wasn't able to upload the uh, original one. Uh, I actually shot myself live on camera, you know, talking about a few things. And for whatever reason, I'm not able to upload it. So I'm going to reshoot it, you know, like this. And... um you know, maybe I'll have a little bit more success. I'm actually pretty frustrated about the whole thing. I'm um, actually going back earlier today. I was watching Captain Strange Loves or Strange Love, Captain Strange Life's video, uh, where one of the things he showed was a Reed Fleming uh, comic book, and I actually kind of lost my mind because it's like, you know, you know, what an obscure comic book, you know. But you don't actually have one, you know what I mean? Now his issue number one was a little bit different than mine, and and at the time I didn't think about it. I thought, oh well, maybe I've got issue two or issue three. Maybe I don't have issue one. But I guess as it turns out, um, you know, the one and he actually said it in the video. But you know, the, what he has is like the original edition, and then what I have is number one of the ongoing series from Eclipse. Um, you know, when, like he said, it went for like three or four, or no, it went for like five or six issues. Uh, but like I said, you know, I got all excited because I was able to like, you know, find it and, you know, just flipping through it and looking through it again. It's just a really crazy type of comic book, kind of a, um, you know, kind of a tongue-in-cheek satire, dark humor type thing. Almost kind of has like an underground comics feel from like the 70s or whatever. But this came out in uh, 86 or whatever. Uh, if you ever find it, you know, definitely pick it up. You've got, you know, really marvelous art. And uh, it really, like Cap says, it really suits the uh, subject matter perfectly. So, one moment. Sorry about that. I'm just having all types of technical difficulties today. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I got all excited because, uh, you know, I found my copy of, like, Reed Fleming number one, and I wanted to show it to everybody and everything. Uh, but, you know, technology and computers are not cooperating with me today. Okay, but I got that. Um, I left the house. I went out and got some new comics. So I usually don't do, like, new comic reviews just because I don't always get the stuff right when it comes out. And even if I do, I'll just, like, let them sit on a table for a long time before I even get around to uh, reading them. But today was the release of Justice League number one, the new 52 by Jeff Johns and Jim Lee. Um, I don't know about this comic book. Um, it was a little bit disappointing. And the reason it's disappointing is um, it's not because it's like such a you know god awful comic book or anything like that. I mean it's it's Jeff Johns, it's Jim Lee, you know, you know what you're getting, and so on and so forth. I'm a little bit disappointed just because it's okay, but it's just okay. I mean I feel for the, you know the relaunch of their their whole line and for it to be the flagship. Uh, comic of their company I think they really really need to just really knock it out of the park just you know just just you know swing for the fences and just just you know hit a home run hit a you know grand slam just to get everybody's attention get the comic book readers attentions get you know casual fans attention get people who don't read comics their attention and this comic really doesn't do that it just reads like you know just an average you know, comic book that would just be coming out. You know what I mean? Uh, one big disappointment is um, you really don't get the whole Justice League in this comic. And I understand it's kind of a setup and everything. Uh, but it feels pretty much like, you know, writing for the trade. And I was actually kind of under the impression that DC said they were going to do a little, you know, a bit less of that, you know. Just make things easy for anybody to just jump on if they just pick up a random issue. This comic really isn't. All you really get, without giving too much away, is you get Batman and you get Hal Jordan, Green Lantern, you know, meeting for the first time. It seems like there may be an alien threat going on. And then you get this little background with, uh, uh, with Cyborg. Well, he's not even Cyborg yet. He's still, uh, Vic Stone in the, uh, in high school. So, you know, and I'm sure after the whole thing is finished and complete, you know, It'll read better uh, as um, as one story than it does, you know, as this first issue. But <coughs> excuse me. 
But like I said, they really need to hit a home run, and uh, they really didn't do that with this. It's just kind of okay. Okay, uh, a comic that came out last month, but I'm just now getting around to reading, is Daredevil number one uh, with Mark Wade uh, writing and uh, Paolo Rivera doing the penciling and Joe Rivera doing the inking. Uh, I had a lot of fun with this comic book. It was really good, really uh, uh, brisk, uh, a little bit more lighthearted than we're used to seeing uh, in Daredevil comics or you know, the last several years. Kind of um, a little bit more flashier, a little bit more superhero y. But that's cool, though. It has a lighter tone, but it works. Um, a lot of plot going on, uh, a lot of different developments and setups of things to come. Um, let's see here. I really like the Rivera's art. It's uh, simple, it's clean, but at the same time, it's really detailed, uh, you know, without having a lot of, like, needless, you know, Cross hatching and, and stuff like that, you know. So it's really fun. I, you know, I'll get the next issue and kind of follow it for a while. Uh, but I think this is probably, you know, just the type of like new life that needed to be br- uh, breathed into uh, the Daredevil comics instead of, you know, people doing the next, you know, rip off or, or whatever of Frank Miller and Bendis and um, and Brubaker. Uh, but yeah, it was really cool. Uh, next thing I got was. Secret Avengers uh, number 16. I really, really, really dig this Joe Cassidy, uh I'm sorry, John Cassidy, uh cover. I think it's really neat. Um, this is the start of a new um, uh, creator team. So you've got Warren Ellis and you've got, I'm not sure if it's Jaime McKelvey or Jamie McKelvey. Um, but it's okay. Uh, basically, it is, uh, it's not really super, super deep, but it's a nice introduction to this, uh, this team. Basically, it's Steve Rogers and, um, you know, these four Avengers, uh, the Beast, Black Widow, and Moon Knight, uh, finding a hidden, uh, city that looks like, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty, I'm halfway sure it was left over from some other, uh, comic or series or whatever and they may be linked to the shadow cabinet who you know the secret avengers have been you know fighting you know since the comic has uh you know pretty much started um fast moving lots of action um lots of crazy pseudo science fictiony ideas going on so this wasn't a bad issue at all uh now the only thing i'm worried about is i remember reading warren ellis's uh astonishing x-men i thought that started off really great and then at some point it just lost steam and i you know i had to drop it so i hope that doesn't happen with this um with this one Next, I have Cloak and Dagger, number one of three, uh, Cloak and Dagger, Spider Island. I have not been um, following the Spider Island event, um, but you really, this really isn't super tied into that. I mean, there's there's a reference point here and there, but you don't really need to understand what's going on with all that other stuff to understand this comic. It's a reintroduction or, yeah, kind of, I guess you'd say, a reintroduction to these characters. I've always liked them. And you get a little bit of their background, their, you know, backstories, their origin, how they work in the environment of New York, you know, how they fit in with the other heroes and things. And, you know, you get an introduction to, to a guy who's, a couple of people are probably going to be the bad guys, and other little developments that may go somewhere or may not go somewhere. So that's, uh, that's pretty fun. I really liked it. Um, oh, I didn't mention... In the back of Daredevil number one, on the very last page, uh, if you flip to it, they actually give a shout out to Gene Colan. Gene Colan like passed away not very long ago, and they show some of the uh, covers for the '60s comics he did for uh, Daredevil, and they have some uh, testimonies from some of the um, creators here. So I thought that was a really cool thing for uh, for them to do. Okay, anyway, getting back to the other comics. Uh, Batgirl number 24, this was the end of the series. I, um, I'm i kind of late to the party with Batgirl. Um, I think I bought a random issue a while back, you know, and I was like, okay, that's nice, whatever. And then I just started actually getting back into it again, you know, some months back. And, of course, you know, here we go. 
uh, the series is ending, and when it comes back, uh, when, you know, as part of the relaunch, uh, Stephanie Brown's not going to be back early anymore. She's going to be spoiler. Uh, but oh well, whatever. Um, a lot of fun. Once again, lighthearted, superheroic type things, and this is, um, really clean art, really competent, paced very well. You know, you feel for the characters, you know, you pretty it's easy to understand what's going on, so I kinda liked it. And this issue was kind of a nice send off and everything, so that was fun. And also I have Alpha Flight uh number three of eight. This is another comic that's tied into the Fear Itself event. Um, but once again, you don't really have to be following that um that event to know what's going on in this comic. Basically, Alpha Flight are Canada's premier superhero team and previously they had been pretty much sanctioned by the government but now Canada's under martial law and uh, they have now become fugitives uh, of the government and let's see here and this issue kind of centers on some of the things going on with a character named Aurora in the past she's always kind of been portrayed as somebody who has this kind of personality disorder, you know, split personality disorder, so it's kind of fun, um, kind of interesting, I'll probably follow a few more issues, you know, so, and uh, it's, it's been okay so far, so, and that's pretty much it for the stuff I read, I got some other stuff here, I've got, you know, uh, Punisher number two, I haven't read that yet, Batman Incorporated number eight, haven't read it, uh, Black Panther, uh, whatever it is, 522, I haven't read that one yet. This is one with the new hate monger, I guess. Uh, but that's it. All right. Uh, hey, tell me what you think. Um, I'm sorry if I seem a little bit grumpy in this video. I'm actually pretty frustrated with a bunch of stuff that's going on right now. Um, you know, just as far as, like, getting this, you know, video up or whatever. But anyway, that's it. Thanks a lot, and you guys have a good one.